Hey, this is Robert with Hush Performance and welcome to another edition of How to Swap. Today we're going to be working on an 8487 Civic Si. We're going to be doing the granddaddy, the grandfather of swaps. We're going to be putting in a D16A1 out of an 89 Acura Integra. This was Honda's first introduction of sports injection. It featured a fuel injected uh, 1.5 liter engine and it was relatively potent for its time. I was really excited when I was able to come up across this one. We've been searching for one of these for quite some time and any of those that are fans of this chassis know that the fenders, just as you see here, are in really good condition. Normally it is indicative of the 8487 CRXs more specifically that these fenders just start cracking all over the place. These are made of a, some type of composite material and it's very unlikely to find one that doesn't have damage. This one was pretty decent considering I do have one small line right here but you know what I'm not gonna fuss about it. It hasn't been crashed. It's a beautiful color silver right I just tired of get red Hondas I've had so many of them. I believe all the interior is there and here at Hush Performance, we're known for cable to hydro conversions for the 88 to 91 Honda Civic, CRX, wagon, and sedan. In those cars, they feature a cable that attaches to the pedal and goes all the way out to the transmission and it mechanically operates it via cable. In the racing scenario, that cable becomes a serious problem and breaks over time. Over the years, we've gotten a lot more requests for this body style, but we needed one first. We're finally able to get in this platform. So along with doing this swap, we plan on doing our own cable to hydro conversion for this chassis. For this swap, we decided that we were gonna go ahead and replace the clutch disc. The other one was worn out. And so we got a, a single disc by Competition Clutch. It's important to keep this in mind, even though the engine says D16, it's not the same as the other D16s. The bell housing is somewhat different, and so other D16 transmission don't bolt directly on there. Make sure you get a clutch disc that matches the year engine that you have. Along with that, you are going to need the hubs. The hubs are indicative to the axles that you're going to need and the intermediate shaft that belongs to that engine. You, and the other thing that you're going to need is this post mount off of your original engine also. All this stuff came out of an 89 Acura Integra. This right here you see is actually the factory engine harness to this vehicle. We are going to be reusing this. I did have an engine harness attached to this engine. The real reason that I use that is so that we can get the lengths right because we are going to have to modify the original engine harness that matches the vehicle onto that engine. So there are going to be things that change such as lengths and I believe a few plugs here and there. It's been a while for me and I can't quite remember everything but I know as I go through it all that stuff is going to start surfacing at the top. This right here is the OEM Integra harness. We're going to be focusing on this now. We're going to be pulling this off. I want this swamp to look very stock. Like this bracket right here, this is going to hold the clutch cable. I did mention a hydraulic conversion. We are going to get to that, but that's later on down the road. But until then, we want to try to keep all this stuff as stock looking as possible. And things like that little bracket there are going to make it look really killer. We have both engine harnesses laid out together. The One thing for sure that I know that we're going to have to change is, is wiring on the distributor. This distributor has an internal coil, whereas the Civic has an external coil. So things that we're going to be changing on the, our engine harness is moving things around in here to meet where they should over here. Right here is the external coil on the Civic. The plug that would connect to it is right here and it's part of the chassis side. Now. That coil is on our Integra plug over here and it needs to be there. So what we'll end up doing is, is most likely doing an extension of this. But instead of the extension that you might be thinking, which is just cutting this off or, or tapping into that and stringing it along, we're gonna be taking, we're gonna be opening up our Civic harness and then re-looming everything through that so it looks as OEM as possible. This right here is the Integra wiring harness. And I cut it open so that I can get to the parts that I wanted to grab off of it and graft into our SI that's over here. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? Everything that I'm going to take off of this and then put on that will look exactly like that. Why am I doing all this? How come there's not more write-ups on this? The plugs on both ends are exactly the same, except there is one here. By repinning this, 
it's gonna work. I'm going for the repin, right? So here is the distributor plug that I'm talking about that we need to move over here. Well, it connects on the this side. We're gonna take this out of the plug over here, leave this distributor plug where it needs to be, and then reroute it through the injector side so that it ends up on this side right here and plugs into the chassis because it's no longer gonna plug on over here because it goes up on this side. And I believe it looked like there was one wire on this side that doesn't need to be here, so we gotta figure out where it is on the SI side. When I figure out exactly what we need to change on this, I'm gonna let you know. And then we're gonna find out towards the end of this video if this is gonna even work. All right, we're back. And you know, going over the schematics on both of them, the 89 Integra to the 87 SI, there, there was a lot of similarities here. There was only two pins that had to change on this plug and it was literally just flip-flopping them around. Not a big deal. Also, we'll be moving some pins from this plug and then adding some pins from this plug over here. What's going to be interesting about this for you is uh, it's just as simple as repinning things, but the pin isn't the same that goes in here. But not to worry because if you still have the original harness, you can pull the pins out of this plug here and just so happens the colors that we need are in here. So we can just cut those long, cut these, add our extensions, and color coordinate them so it not get confusing when you gotta uh, put these where they're supposed to go as far as the 87 SI goes. To make things a little bit easier for you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a schematic of these so that you can do the comparison for yourself to know which pins you need to change. A few hours later, we have it all linked back up. It's starting to look pretty good here. You guys, I think, would appreciate a harness that looked like this on your swamp. So we have right here, again, the distributor plugs that's just going to be on this side. Those are two wires that we obviously have to add. Then we have some more distributor plugs here. We have our wiring harness strung on the engine. It's looking very OEM. Of course, everything lined up just like it should. Now we're gonna be working on getting all of the brackets that we're not gonna be using anymore. Like this right giant bracket back here, this is the power steering pump bracket. We're not gonna be needing that, but you can see that it's integrated right here in the alternator bracket. So when I remove this, there's nothing that's gonna hold that on, not a big deal. We're just gonna find a shorter bolt to stick in there once we pull all of this out. ready to put the engine in. There is a motor mount that we needed that I didn't have. That's the original 1.5 motor mount that goes on the driver's side. So what I did was I modified the Integra mount. The reason that you need the Civic mount is because it fits it much more tighter to the timing belt. This mount is the, Civic's, is the Civic mount and it needs to sit somewhere around here. Just from experience, I know that this thing usually sits up in about this area. I don't know how well this is gonna work out. There was a piece here that I already had to cut off in an attempt to try to use this item. And so what I'm going to use is this hole right here. And I believe that hole could align. And if I need to modify this anymore, then there is still a lot of material here to work with. As we put the motor in, we'll just see if it aligns and if we need to make any more modifications, we certainly will. I'm sure if this was a viable solution, people would be doing this and not modifying the Civics, unless there's just less modification that you have to do to the Civic. Or maybe you just need an industrial bandsaw to be able to cut that off. Either way, we'll figure it out, and once we do, we'll learn this together. I just wish we had the part. I'm using the torsion bars as a jack point. This raises the car high enough for me to use truck-style jack stands. It's at a point where I can slide the engine underneath of there. It's relatively light, and you can see I can do it by myself. Once the vehicle's underneath there, then we just lower the car over the motor. I 
I chose to remove the exhaust manifold. I felt that that was just going to be a little bit much. And the engine bay is rather tight. Another thing is this motor mount right here that's bolted right on, to, right on the side of the transmission. The Civic mount is just like this, except the bracket is a little bit different, so you're gonna have to use the Integra, and it bolts up into the frame rail pretty much like an EG or you know a DC Integra, except that this is, it. this is the transmission mount exclusively, so you are going to need that. The rear transmission mount bracket it sits up on top. It's got those two studs over there. The Civic one will work with the Integra engine. I set it up in there to see how it's gonna work out. It looks like I may need to put that bracket in after the engine in. As you can see, as it is right now, it looks like it's gonna catch up on the throttle body. It is starting to look super good in here. There are so many things that I decided to get off of this engine when I pulled it out of the Integra. Things like uh, the fuel return, which are just gonna work out perfect. The fuel line that I snagged off of the Integra because I wanted it to fit right, that's gonna go there. Oh my gosh. And the fact that this engine had not been molested and I decided to pull it all out as one solid piece. We have everything in here. It's gonna look so OEM. There is a ton of room back there to fit the T-bracket in there. This motor mount right here is almost um, close to being bolted up. Over here, we're close. That hole that we were talking about right there that we're gonna use for our motor mount looks like it might work out. I raised the engine with the cherry picker that allowed me to bolt in the transmission mount. And so now the engine is hanging off of the mount and the cherry picker as I'm working this rear T-bracket into place. I'm doing these two things because it's going to help align the driver's side motor mount better. I'm still having problems with that motor mount. We're waiting for my buddy to show up to work so that we can use his bandsaw. I don't have a bandsaw in the shop just yet. That is among many of the things that are on the list to get, much like a lift. And we are working on this little ear right there on the OEM bracket. Now remember, we're only having these problems because I'm not using the correct mount. I'm supposed to be using the original 8487 uh, Civic bracket and I was a goof and I got rid of the engine with that bracket on there So in the meantime, we can connect everything else while we're waiting for him I don't think he's gonna be uh, at the shop for a few hours and we're early risers So we can probably get this thing really close to being complete in the next few hours
how everything is starting to look is getting me really excited. I mean, it looks so OEM. Everything's fitting well. I'm really happy that I decided to keep all these extra hoses. I do have one hose that I'll keep in mind. Uh, next time is this guy right here. This right here is going to go to the charcoal canister. It's got a different vacuum uh, line size on there and it's not the same so I'm going to have to change this out. And then we do have some vacuum, extra vacuum line here that we're short. That next time when I grab, maybe I'll grab some extra vacuum line. That way it's it's numbered like the OEM stuff and it just looks so stock. I just really like that stuff. Uh, another thing that I grabbed, which is something to keep in mind, at least with B-series swaps, you'll want the B-series throttle cable when you're doing a B-series swap. And so just like that, I grabbed this one, not knowing if the single cam uh, throttle cable was gonna work. I actually just test fit it and it does work. And this one is a bit long. And so because this one fits and it's short, it looks really good in here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Let's go ahead and put this on so you can see what it looks like. Right, this is what our mount's looking like. We got the bracket ear trimmed off. It's allowing us in, it's allowing access in there. But with the mount on, we are still off quite a bit. You can see right down here that the bracket is inhibiting uh, the mount even tucking back far enough, which it needs to go even further. If you look at the eyelet on the mount and then the eyelet on the chassis bracket, Going back that far, looks like we're gonna have to make our own holes. The holes that the hole that was on the steel bracket isn't gonna work out at all. And we're also gonna have to trim this fold right here, which you would have to do anyways using this mount on this engine. This next section took me about eight hours of work and the video could actually just expand on this one topic. There was a lot of work. And so needless to say, if you have the Civic bracket, make sure you keep it. There's a lot less modification that you have to deal with than trying to use the Integra bracket like we did here. There it is, finally. I got it at an angle that I'm satisfied enough with. I've been messing with this thing all day. Eight hours at least today. And that includes like the three or four hours I had yesterday. Will I do this again? No. This is Art, he's working on the spindle replacement. You haven't seen a lot of him. He's been working on some other projects in the shop. We have larger Integra axles. It also is gonna require larger hubs. I do have 
a Civic hub out here so you can see the difference between the sizes of the axle itself and the entire hub. This is the Integra axle trying to go into the Civic. It's just not happening. The threads barely make it through there. The Integra hub is a direct replacement. You'll need to grab the caliper from it as well, but you can retain your, your OEM lower control arm and tie rod and strut. Back to the wiring inside the engine bay. This right here is for our coil, and it's gonna connect to this plug right here. We no longer need the external coil uh, because it's in our distributor. I went to the salvage yard and we were looking for a plug that looked like this. And this round plug here is the actual distributor plug on like an OBD0 uh, EF. The pins are the same. So what I'm gonna do is depend these and then put them inside this. Then I have the male end, which will just connect to our jumper here. I'm gonna run my jumper harness now in through the firewall. There is this plug right here that, I'm cho that I chose to use. There's gonna be a few wires you're going to have to add and this is the jumper harness that we made for that. I lost some footage explaining what wires need to be added but in the schematic that we'll make, it'll be listed on those few wires that are gonna be running through this jumper that we created here and it's just going to work its way to the ECU just on the other side of the firewall. We got the wires plugged into the ECU in the what we think is the appropriate pinouts. It's pretty difficult. I didn't have an 89 Integra uh, service manual so I was able to track down through like all my old stuff. All my analog printouts. I had uh, this wiring diagram, 8587SI to ZC wiring conversion. This was written by uh, Brian Gillespie of Hosport. And if I read it correctly, I should have the pins in the appropriate spot. There are a few pins that need to be removed uh, according to the diagram here. Then you'll just insulate these so they're not gonna be arcing on anything else. I'm going to unplug the ECU. And what that's going to do is basically not send any power uh, through the wiring harness and not fire the injectors or the fuel pump because I want to crank the engine over and build some oil pressure. It could take a little while. There it is, that means we got oil pressure. All right, we struggled a little bit last night. I thought it was the wiring, it just wouldn't start, but I couldn't hear a fuel pump. So we did the standard stuff, make sure that there was gas in there. We opened up the fill neck, listen inside, do we hear a pump? No, but it got late, so then we had to wait until this morning. On these, the fuel pump is external, fortunately, and it's eh, okay to kind of get to. The fuel pump sits right next to the gas tank, right here in the trailing arm area. It did take better half of the day here to discover what we were going to do and what our plans were. This is the original not functioning. We do have power coming straight to here, so that is a good thing. We did find out that our pump is bad. So then we're like, well, if we have to replace that, let's get a Bosch 044. Yeah, no problem. It's in line. It's going to work great. The Bosch actually costs about the same as a replacement. So that was wonderful. But then the fittings are all kinds of different. And this took us better half of the day to find all the fittings that were gonna work here. This right here is an 18 by 150 and this is a 12 by 150. Keep that in mind when you decide to do this. We're gonna have to cut the leads off of this and then we're gonna solder our new eyelets onto this and then that way we can still use this harness here and then plug right into our factory get up there. That's our setup. It should sit in there just like this. The banjo comes would normally come right here and it's, it is a 90, so we're just gonna cut the banjo off and slide it on there and then put a clamp on that end. And then uh, the Bosch comes with its own eyelets. The OEM lines right here are kind of soldered to the original oil, to the original fuel pump. Comes with its own boots also here. 
comes with its own hardware. The job is complete. Frustrating to say the least, but uh, look at in there. I did have to trim some material out inside the wheel well here to clear this fitting here. I was able to reuse the factory uh, bracket here and there's also this little clamp that goes over the pump itself. I was not able to reuse the factory banjo, so we have a push to connect fitting that's going on the other side here. We flared and clamped down the OEM hardline. So next in line is actually just crank it over. You can hear it there. Now what I want to do is make sure it's got fuel pressure. I don't have a gauge on here. What I'm going to do is crack this loose to, to hope that uh, it's going to be wet. Which, oh, let's hope it's wet. Oh, yes. It's primed, we got coolant, and we got fuel. So if I did my wiring right, it could start right now. We'll see how it goes. I can smell it, it's getting plenty of fuel. Uh, but I did get a check light there, which is a good thing. I'm hoping that it's going to tell me that uh, something's up with the distributor uh, wiring or something like that. Those are the things that I had to add and also remove. like an 88, 89 um, Integra, which is essentially like an EF. There are a couple of things that are different. We made a schematic, which we'll share, share uh, to you guys uh, in the description below. We'll try to make it a, a PDF clickable version so you can download it yourself. This is totally cool that this is idling. It's actually idling pretty decently considering that uh, I don't know how long this engine's been sitting for and uh, I haven't checked the timing. What I'm gonna do now is just gonna let it, <coughs> I'm just gonna let it get to temperature. This is what I pretty much do on all of my engine swaps. Make sure that the, uh, the fan is gonna come on like it's supposed to and then uh, we'll come back once we get all that figured out. Not only does it run well, but we detailed it up and it makes a world of difference with it all cleaned up in there. We have a really nice pressure washer did the job. Uh, we, checked, we checked the timing, we have no codes now, everything's cleared up. As you can see, everything's fitting really well except for this one thing here. So if there was anything I would say to add to your swap, grab the air tube and air box perhaps. I'm not sure if the air boxes will interchange or if this inlet on the Integra tube would fit, um, but you know, look, you can see here there's a length problem and then not only is there a length problem, but there is a size problem also. This tube is much larger than the Integra. So I'll be on the hunt for the replacement tube until, well, we put a turbo manifold on this thing. This thing right here was, I guess, a nice attempt, but a fail at the same time. This is just how I got it. They had cut this out maybe to make a cold air intake thinking that it was going to be filtrated, but the tube is right above the filter, so it doesn't work. We did clean out the interior as well, and before I put the passenger seat in there and we go for a test drive with you guys, I wanted to show you some of the wiring stuff at the ECU. There's going to be a few wires that you're going to be adding here. These are these here, and hopefully that makes more sense in the schematic that we'll add. There are some pins that need to be removed right here, and any pins that are getting removed is to make room for other pins. And what you'll want to do is we're going to 
<clears throat> what you want to do is make sure that these are insulated. So we're actually just going to put some heat shrink over the ends of these. There were several wires up in here that I ended up having to switch around and flip flop. I think a lot of the confusion I had is because the information I was finding online was to do a ZC swap in this car, 86 and 87. But when we jump into the 88s and 89s, there are things at the distributor that when you're doing like a multi-point conversion, you're going to be moving pins from one connector over the other and then the new pins that you're adding go into there. It can get confusing and I just hope that it makes a little bit more sense in the diagram. But as you can see here, the interior cleans up pretty decently and what I like a lot about these older chassis is these were not a chassis that a lot of people like to use so they're usually not modified too much and I like it because most of everything is there. So I think what we're left to do now is just go for a ride. I'm gonna put the passenger seat in there, we'll bring Art along with us, and then hopefully we'll end this video with a nice smoky burnout. A quarter mile on it already, just from going around the block. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. Something ain't right. We gotta check the... <laughs> it was like the slowest, loudest ride right now. Yeah, it was. That's a typical Honda for uh, yeah. I don't anybody e that didn't know. <laughs> yeah. But I think right now we're just gonna do a burnout. Hopefully it does one. <laughs>